2. Resident Evil 2 Remake is a game I have been waiting for since the GameCube. In 2002, Capcom released the remake of the original Resident Evil. At the time, it was mind-blowing. I remember being so excited that this could only mean that Resident Evil 2 was next. Getting those sweet updated graphics on the GameCube also. Everyone thought it was going to get a GameCube remake. It was being reported all over the place. And then, um... We got it on GameCube. But it was just a port of the original game. An excellent port, by the way, that had some new features, but regardless, it was still a port. Now here we are in 2019, finally, finally we have that full-blown remake that we've been waiting for for decades. My most anticipated game of this year. So does it live up to the hype? Does it live up to those expectations that I've been developing in my head over the years? For the most part, yes. Yes, it does. I would have had this review up much earlier, but before I reviewed it, I, I really wanted to make sure that I really dove in and explored all the story content it had to offer. I played only on Hardcore. I did Leon A and B, Claire A and B, first and second run if you want to call it that. The Tofu Survivor Mode and the Fourth Survivor Mode. Yeah, you want some? Come here! Come at me! Uh! Yeah? Duel! No! <laughs> Let's see who dies first. <laughs> uh! You're gonna pay with your life! You're not gonna eat me today! <laughs> oh my god, Tofu was victorious! He lives! I can confidently say that I know the game like the back of my hand now. It, it's it's ingrained in my head now. Story-wise, Resident Evil 2 retells the events of the original Resident Evil 2, so no parts of Outbreak have been added in, no Operation Raccoon City, no Resident Evil 2 side stories from Umbrella or Dark Side Chronicles, none of that extra stuff. It's purely Resident Evil 2. And it's not a copy and paste of the original story either. There's some details that have been changed, and I have heard some complaints that it messes with established canon in some cases. I don't necessarily think so. I, I see this as just another retelling of the events of Raccoon City. I don't feel this game was ever intended to be a replacement. And let's be real, Capcom has never stopped going back to Raccoon City and retelling that era. So pick your favorite version of the Raccoon City story and run with it. In either case, if you put nostalgia aside, this remake improves upon the original version of the game in many ways. Which is no surprise since technology is where it is now. Instead of a Leon disc and a Claire disc, we now have two campaigns to choose from involving both characters. Your first time around is considered the first run, and after you beat it, you unlock the second run. With the general idea that the other character's already been through some portions of the police station. But it's really just an alternate version of the campaign you already played, with some differences. Your character starts off at a different point of the story, puzzle solutions are in different places, the weapons are different, some enemies pop up earlier in the game, and the second run is where you get the true final ending, and the real final boss. Now you can go ahead and do a third and fourth playthrough and swap your characters around from how you originally did it, and honestly, I, I wouldn't say that's totally necessary, since the scenarios will be fairly similar to what you've already done besides some different character interactions. It was really interesting seeing how Claire meets Marvin and interacts with him, having a conversation about her brother Chris, who Marvin knows because they work in the same police station, versus meeting him as Leon. I'm not gonna be around long. Once I find Chris, we're out of here. You really Chris's sister? Yeah. Why? Did you find something? He's on vacation. Europe, I think. Left weeks ago. But honestly, all you need to know is that this place will eat you alive if you aren't careful. Yeah, well, I was supposed to start last week, and I got a call to stay away. I wish I'd come here sooner. You're here now, Leon. That's all that matters. Okay, Lieutenant, I'm ready. Speaking of which, the voice acting. Resident Evil is known to have horrible voice acting that is now considered legendary. It's Forrest. Oh my god. It's awful. Rebecca. Chris. Thank god you're safe. I'm sorry that you were worried about me. We are in great danger. We must organize a search for the others and get the hell out of here. Understood? Yes, sir! 
This time around, the voice acting is fantastic, really breathing life into these characters and giving them real emotions. And don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. You take it out, or you run. Got it? Yes, sir. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do while exploring the environments in the game was recognizing all the different landmarks from the original, and Capcom took enough care and attention and detail to create a new updated version of this world while still honoring what came before. The police station lobby with the huge statue is still there. You still cross the basketball court in the Raccoon City streets. That small alleyway with a dumpster and a zombie next to it. If you play classic Resident Evil 2, you recognize this right away. Kendo's gun shop is there. And fun fact here, there, there's an easy to miss Easter egg near there based on Mikhail's character from Resident Evil 3. Oh look! Resident Evil 3 reference, guys. Mikhail's authentic Russian cuisine. That's cool in the eyes of a veteran Resident Evil fan. You've seen the series evolve from pure survival horror to action to a first-person shooter. The, the series has been all over the place in terms of gameplay style. Resident Evil 2 Remake is what happens when you reach the end of that line and you've thrown out everything that didn't work before but kept the best elements from the entire series. And I feel it creates the best Resident Evil experience. The almost photorealistic graphical style of Resident Evil 7. The third person camera angle and controls of the more action oriented Resident Evil games. The gunpowder mixing element of Resident Evil 3. The classic inventory management system. The story of Resident Evil 2. It's Resident Evil 2 infused with the greatest elements of all the games that came after it. I wasn't expecting this level of detail when I first booted up the game. And it left me impressed. I thought we were just going to get Resident Evil Evil 2 in the style of 4 through 6, but it's so much more than that. A crucial part of the series, personality, that it slowly shed away from was its more horror-related elements in favor of action set pieces. And to be fair, with games like Revelations 1 and 2 and 7, Capcom has been slowly returning to its more horror roots. And I'm happy to say that this one does retain its horror elements, and the jump scares are back. I love jump scares. How did that zombie get up here? Like, the liquor must have thrown him up there or something. <sighs> Shit! Oh! Mr. X is gonna hear me! Oh! Shit! Oh my god, no! Oh! I shit myself! And I mentioned before that other side spin-offs and non-canon games aren't really incorporated here, but there are some small elements I noticed were pulled from the Outbreak games that were kind of cool and fairly obscure. The Underground Passageway, that's a main story piece in the game that you have to unlock in the police station lobby, that didn't exist at all in the original Resident Evil 2. That idea came straight from the RPD scenario in Outbreak. And even some of the monsters did. In Outbreak, we also had zombies that were infested with the T-Virus plants and were being controlled by them. There's also a version of that same idea here. Plant zombies. Little elements like this added so much value to me and made me realize that Capcom really paid attention to the little things when crafting this game. Besides honoring what came before, they also massively improved the bosses in the game. Birkin still transforms into massive, monstrous forms and exciting fights that require precision and fast reaction time. Graphics aren't everything, but you can't help but be impressed by the sheer level of detail. Leon still runs away from the giant alligator in the sewers, but instead of calmly walking away for it and waiting for it to swallow a gas canister and then one shot killing it, now there's an entire chase sequence before that took me a couple tries because actually I didn't realize I was supposed to be moving left and right to avoid his attacks. I was just trying to run in a straight line. But it's really cool. They added this whole sequence and then you, you still do your one shot kill. It's just a lot more cinematic now. But the huge improvement that essentially brings the tension full force in this game is Mr. X. Oh shit. I got his hat off. No! What do I do? I can't... This huge gray hulk of a tyrant blows away the original version in every way imaginable. It's been funny hearing the reactions of people that weren't necessarily around or were maybe too young when the original Resident Evil 2 came out that never experienced Mr. X. He's relentless, and he wants you dead at all costs.
I'm dead. I'm dead. No! No! Son of a bitch. Look away from me! Oh my god! If you're too noisy, he'll find you around the station. Even if you're not, he's constantly exploring, and if you have a surround sound system, his footsteps are all around you and getting closer. It drives you insane. In the original version of Resident Evil 2, you can run right by Mr. X in most cases, and then you can go into the next room and you're safe. He doesn't know how to open doorknobs. Not in the remake. Mr. X goes right through those doors, and he sends you running into a panic. The only real safe rooms are the ones with the typewriters and the storage boxes, and running away from him and hiding created some hilarious and terrifying moments. Oh, he's, he's right around the corner. I know it. Yeah, come at me, bitch. I got a save room right next to me. Yeah, okay. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Huh? Huh? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> uh, I feel delirious, guys. I... You found me? I have a magnum! Oh no. <laughs> Capcom hit it out of the park with Mr. X. Sometimes you'll be trying to quietly maneuver a hallway because there's a liquor walking around. Then Mr. X comes walking down the hallway and you have no choice but to run. You can take him down, but really, that's just a waste of ammo, since it's only a temporary inconvenience for him. Other times, you're minding your own business, you think you're safe, and you turn into a hallway, and he's just there. Resident Evil 2 can easily become a game of cat and mouse, but it doesn't take it to the point where it becomes overwhelming. As you struggle through, you'll eventually get to a point in the story where Mr. X is no longer regularly chasing you, giving you a chance to breathe. And another character that's massively improved was Police Chief Irons. In the original version, they implied he was some kind of a pervert or he was some kind of psycho that murdered the mayor's daughter. But in here, they, they truly made him a monster. You little bitch. You're gonna pay for this. Oh, you little shit. Wow. Now he's a monster outside, too. There's an entirely new segment where Sherry is a playable character hiding from Irons who kidnapped her and he keeps her in this orphanage and it feels like you left Resident Evil and entered a horror movie about a serial killer. It's a really disturbing scene, which also includes an awesome reference to one of the greatest horror films of all time, The Shining. Lock the door! I'm coming to you, Sherry. Jesus! The Shining! The absolute best way to experience Resident Evil 2 Remake is hardcore mode. Now, I do want to say it's not for everybody. Especially the game journalists out there that like to complain when a game is harder than a Kirby experience. If you want to just kind of coast through the game and just experience the story, do not choose hardcore mode. But for you Resident Evil veterans out there, it's the only way to play. Instead of auto saves and checkpoints helping you along the way, it's old school Resident Evil. You have to save your ink ribbons and you can only save at a typewriter. You die, you go back to where you last saved. You didn't save, welcome back to the title screen. Conserving ammo and managing your items properly becomes a necessity in order to survive through the game and see the end credits. You have to manage your inventory correctly. It's beautiful. Every potential gunshot in the game becomes a decision that can make or break your run. Deciding when to shoot, when to run, where to shoot, do I finish this zombie, do I disable them by shooting them in the legs and ignoring them. Decisions like these are common and you often find yourself making split second decisions that often end up in mistakes that end in a game over screen. I need help guys. I need help bad. Definitely when I save I'm gonna do an extra save. Uh, no! <laughs> and the knife is something I usually don't even like to use in Resident Evil games. Yes, I get a lot of shit for it. That's how I play. I always prefer just shooting the zombies from afar over close range attacks. But the knife in Resident Evil 2, along with other defensive items you get like grenades, are they're crucial here. 
You can use them to defend yourselves from attack if you get grabbed. And to make things even more difficult, there's no zombie head stomps like in later Resident Evil games. But that would have made the game too easy. It doesn't belong in this experience. Keep that in Resident Evil 5 and 6. Doing my very first playthrough of this game on hardcore mode, it was incredibly satisfying. It has what I like to call a de-escalating difficulty. Everyone always seems to talk about how the game has that adaptive difficulty where enemies adjust to your level of skill and get harder, but I actually found the opposite. You'll struggle immensely through the first half of the game, constantly running low on health and struggling to save ammo. But if you play your cards right, manage your inventory properly, find the upgrades to your weapons, save your health items, don't use them when you don't need to, the second half of the game becomes a lot more manageable, making you feel like you've prepared. It's the true Resident Evil experience. It rewards you for playing smart versus shooting everything in your path. As you learn the layout of the game more, you'll become more familiar with everything and be able to shave off hours from the runtime, resulting in better and better grades. I love that Capcom kept this hardcore difficulty. I feel like by today's standards, video games in general are, are fairly easy, even on the hardest difficulties, just compared to what I grew up with. So Resident Evil 2 Hardcore Mode is a reminder of what Resident Evil used to be. This Hardcore Mode used to be our standard regular mode. Also, no matter how you choose to play, make sure you turn on the alternate outfits and the classic music for a blast of nostalgia. It really improves the overly quiet atmosphere of the remake standard settings. And why would you not want to use the original costumes? Come on. Clearly, I think Resident Evil 2 Remake is an experience that should not be missed. But like most games, it isn't perfect. I do have a couple of nitpicks and aspects I feel were missed opportunities. In the original, of course, Leon and Claire escape Raccoon City together with Sherry, and they didn't have all that much interaction with each other, right? Well, since this is a remake, I feel like they should have taken the opportunity to include more interactions between them. They have almost nothing to do with each other. They, they meet at the beginning and get separated. They see each other outside once for a couple seconds, and at the very end, they see each other on a computer monitor for another couple of seconds, and then they escape. Even in the original, there's a whole segment where Claire is creating the G-Virus vaccine for Sherry while Leon goes into the lab at the same time, and then he's the one that goes back and takes Sherry to the train and watches over her. In this version, Leon doesn't even meet Sherry until the very end in any scenario. Not a huge deal that affects the overall quality of the game, but if they improve multiple aspects of the original, why, why not create more interactions between Leon, Claire, and Sherry and flesh all their characters out more? There's also some enemies I, I was surprised to realize that weren't even in the game. The spiders have always been classic Resident Evil monsters. They're nowhere to be found in this game. They were in the original Resident Evil 2. The moth in the Umbrella Lab, completely missing as well. The plant monsters are missing, but to be fair, it seems that they just replaced them with different plant monsters, so I, I'll give those a pass. Capcom also took the adult G-Mutants and put a bunch of them in the sewers as standard enemies versus a boss like in the original, so that's new. But I still would have liked to see some of the classic monsters that were erased. It also would have been nice to have zombie Brad Vickers as an easter egg in the second run campaign, since you go to the same area that he's supposed to be in. But at least you do get a poster with him on it, which was kind of hilarious. Resident Evil 2 Remake makes me excited for the future of the Resident Evil series. I, I feel like it's back on track. I feel like they found their magic sauce and they should stick with it. While I absolutely enjoyed Resident Evil 7 and the first person gameplay felt right for that game, I want this to be the ongoing formula for Resident Evil. This is what Resident Evil is. And it seems like Resident Evil 3 is coming down the pipeline as well. I mean, with all these good reviews and sales figures, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. And even though it is too early to declare Resident Evil 2 Game of the Year, because there's a ton of tough competition this year, when the Game of the Year awards pop up at the end of this year, it's, it's gonna be a candidate there. I, I can't imagine it not at least making the list. It deserves a ton of praise. It, it truly is something special. It's the template, the perfect example of how to take an old game that technologically is now outdated and bring it to the modern world of gaming while still keeping its spirit and still making it feel like a fresh brand new experience. This is how you remake a game. And if you do decide based on this review that you're interested in picking it up, I do have an Amazon affiliate link in the description where you can buy it. Now, of course, you don't have to do that. It does help out the channel and it's available on multiple consoles. And I also did review the original Resident Evil 2. So if you're curious how I felt about that one, you can click right there. I'll catch you guys later. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button with all of your strength. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any new content.
You can follow me on social media or go into my community tab for updates. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the channel directly on Patreon. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.